Here at Totally Awesome Fishing, do you know what we've got? We've got our own test bed. A secret place we come to to test all our lures. Now a lot of you guys out there keep contacting us really, emailing us about different lures, different types of, you know, deceitful deceivers I call them really. Now we're going to show you the basics of lures. It's going to echo in here because it's like a huge great big polytunnel we've erected especially to do the filming to show you what the action is like on some of these lures underwater. I just got my trusty outfit that I go pike fishing with, my lure fishing one. Now I'm going to start with showing you what's called a spoon. This is what you call a spoon because years ago they used to saw off the end of a tablespoon which had that curve in it and it's hollowed out and it flutters, it flickers and flutters. So that's what you call a spoon. Let's just, generally, you, you'd only have that one treble in there, but if you just look carefully, this particular spoon has holes here and holes here. So you can take the treble off here. If you want to put it up there, you can. If you want to put it there, you can. If you want to add extra trebles, you can add extra trebles there. And a copper spoon is probably one of the most famous fish catchers, certainly for pike, over the last hundred years. Very, very popular in Ireland. Let's check it out, see what it looks like in our private test bed pool. The copper spoons definitely work better for me when fished in short snatches using the rod top, but always pause a second to let it flutter down because that is often the trigger that will make a pike strike. Okay, so you've seen the spoon, the action on that spoon, where it has its sort of flutters and flashes. Now this is a spinner. Everybody calls anything with metal spinners. They're wrong. A spoon wobbles. A spinner is on a blade, like this, looped on a single bar, and a spinner, wow, you're gonna love this one. That's right, it spins. Now, where you can normally twitch that spoon and wobble it and get an erratic action out of it, with these, they do not work so well. These work at a constant speed, much, much better, so you get that blade throbbing. And this one, you, you can see it's had some, it had some fur, I think it was a musky one. I've cut all that fur back, I didn't like the idea of that. But it's still got that red tag and that can still work very well. Just a single split ring here to hold your treble hook. That's all you need, a variety of sizes. Now remember, the smaller this blade, the faster you'll probably have to wind because it's gonna whiz round more. The bigger the blade, the slower you can wind it because it's biting more water. It makes contact with the water better. This would be a good average pike spinner. Let's look at it in the water, see what it looks like. In contrast, a steady retrieve watching your rod top is the way to fish the spinner with that revolving blade. It sends out a constant vibration as well as that light catching the revolving silver blade. It's great for small to medium sized pike. Okay, now you've seen the spoon, you've seen the spinner. Now, it's the exciting bit, we get onto the plugs, which are basically an imitation fish. Wood, plastic, rubber, latex, whatever. This is a hard one. Now this, we used to call alphabet plugs years ago. It's just a standard fish catching one, just for anything. You can use them for largemouth bass in America, for striped bass, any predator will have a whack at this. Treble hook at the back, treble hook on the belly, both got split rings there, so you, you can change those to barbless if you want, you can squash the hooks to barbless, you can take those split rings off, you can fish them with singles if, if you so wish. Now this one will float and inside it, if you can hear this, up there, it's got a rattle. Most of these do. If they don't, it doesn't really matter because it's visual, but also audibly underwater, that sound will carry out and the predators home in on it. Now you. You can fish these very, very slowly. There's about three ways of fishing them. You fish them slowly, just under the surface, because they're going to float. And they've got this vein on the front, plastic vein, so as soon as you start retrieving, it's going to do this. It's going to dig down, pull into the water, and it's going to wiggle along. Or you can just do a constant speed, like we saw with the spinner. Just do a constant speed with it. Or you can do an erratic one. And I've got to tell you, I catch more pipe than anything on the erratic movement. The alphabet plugs are really proven pipe catchers. I've had pike to over 20 pounds on a silver version. They float, so as soon as you start your retrieve, you can decide on what depth you want them to run at. And also, whether you want a constant retrieve or the jerky, snatchy style. And don't forget that pike can hear that rattle inside.
Okay, so that's a standard single plug there. You can also get them jointed. And you can get, I have seen triple jointed ones, don't really use them. You've got a jointed one there, got the vein, so as you pull it down, it floats to start with. As you pull it down, it goes deep. Two ways, constant speed, you know, to give it a regular wiggly action, or jerk bait speed, which is working it with the rod top. Jerk at one end and jerk at the other. Yeah, you know which one I am. Let's take a look at it. The jointed plug runs very straight with a steady retrieve and the pike can engulf it with relish. But I found more attacks come when I start to break up that action by using short flicks and snatches on the rod top. Lure actions are determined not just by the shape and size of the lure, but the angler using varying retrieve speeds and rod action to make that lure really work. That was the jointed plug, but you can also get a similar shape plug with three trebles, a lot, lot bigger, and a steeper plastic vein in there. So that will go down a bit deeper, and what that will do is create a bigger vibration, a bigger waggle, a more aggressive tail wiggle on the back of this plug. So we'll take a look at it. Again, you can fish it as a constant speed, or you can fish it, what I call jerk bait, popping it and just breaking up that even swimming motion. It just depends on a personal preference of how you catch the fish. I personally don't catch many at constant speed. I like fishing alternate speeds, stop, start, stop, start. Let's check it out. I'm not a lover of what I call pencil lures, as it's hard work getting them to break up that constant action, but they do catch pike and it's always worth keeping a couple in the lure box, if only to break up your fishing day. Okay guys, you've seen that one? Now, you might have noticed there weren't many teeth marks on that plug, and that's because it's not my favorite. I'm gonna bring you my favorite now. Don't tell anybody else on YouTube about this. Look at the teeth marks on that puppy. This is a Barramundi plug. Fluorescent green, red belly, trust me, the action on this, this is a wood one I bought out in Australia, in Cairns, in case you want to know where it comes from, that's where they catch all barramundis in Australia. This thing is a killer dealer plug. What an action. I can't wait to get it in the water. I'll probably get a take on this one. Now this is my favourite all-time pike lure, the green barramundi plug. What an action. Of course, I catch a lot of pike on it because I use it a lot. You need to have faith in a few lures rather than a lot and find out what action gets you the most strikes. Favourite number two guys, again a wooden Barramundi one. Hear it? Put it by the microphone. Tiny little rattling down there. I guess they put some shot in there. Ouch! And very, very sharp hooks. Now that one has a banana curve in it, so it's going to help it curve down, and they've continued that shape straight into the bottom lip of the plug as one piece. It's not screwed on at the bottom, it's not just glued in there, it's part of the same plug. And a good plug generally will have a wire right the way through that body, into the back, and through here. So if it does burst apart, if you're fishing, say, sea fishing with big plugs, which I have done for Carambisi, what they call GTs, it will crush and smash a plug, and as with a barracuda, if that's screwed in there, it snaps off, you lost the fish. So generally, a top class plug will have wire through the center of the body. This one goes so deep, it's actually going back to Australia. It's probably gonna come up in Brisbane. Some lures are designed to run straight and true, while others can fly around all over the place. This may be great in inducing a pike to strike, but such a violent retrieve action can also mean they miss the lure at that vital moment when you give it a good jerk. So it's something of a gamble which retrieve you want to use. Okay guys, you're all my friends on YouTube. This has never been shown before. A big barramundi one. When I say big, it probably does catch big barramundi. It catches big pike as well. It's the giant size version of that fluorescent green one I use, and that's my killer dealer color. But I couldn't get this one in that same color, and it's just not quite the same, but a cracking plug. Let's check it out. 
Very often the best casting weights come from traditional wooden lures. And remember, the more ground you cover on the cast, the more chance you have of pulling it past a pike's nose. They may even follow a lure some distance before making that strike and never lift the lure out until it's right by the bank. It could be a last second lunge for the predators. It's in the top three of my pike lures, that's for sure. This one, guys, looks nothing like a fish at all. It looks like a, what, a door handle or a bullet or something like that. Treble at the back, treble in the middle, a big target eye there, you can see the big eye on it, a very, very long vein, and that has got the wire you should be able to see right through the plastic of that deep vein. Otherwise, if that snaps off and you lose it with a ring, obviously you've lost your lure and you've lost the fish. So this is good plug. So the wire goes through in here and it should link up the rest of the body right through to the tail. Because it's set very shallow, it should run deep. So remember that. If it's at that angle, you think it's gonna dig down a lot, not necessarily, it's gonna be the angle here. If it's shallow, I find they run deep. Let's check him out. I rarely use deep running plugs in shallow rivers or lakes as they can often pick up weed. They work best in deep waters like gravel pits or reservoirs where the pipe will be lying near the bottom. Okay, you can see that long vein, as this is a jointed plug, similar, it's gonna run deep there. This is a very old one. Well, now, we're not sponsored by anybody. Totally awesome, sponsored totally awesome. We're not sponsored by anybody. No one ever give us, no one's ever knocked on my door and give me any money. I don't know if it happens to you, but it doesn't happen to me. So we're not plugging any particular mates. But this one is called an Abu Hilo. I'm only saying that because it is an Abu Hilo. It's jointed, but it's not just a ring joint. It joins, if I can show you that, that way. Can you just see how the body's moving? It doesn't just, on one hinge, it goes this way and that way. So it gives you really good action. Another bonus, look at this an adjustable lip. So you can have it popping along the surface, you can lock it and let it run deep, you can fish it slow, constant, fast, popper, whatever. Real good plug for using for British pike fishing. In fact, catches most stuff anyway. We're gonna show you running deep and then we're gonna show you running on the surface with the vein open. Let's try the deep angle vein first. The versatility of the old Abu Hilo lure makes it a must for any pike fisherman's lure box. That adjustable vein on the front is a great invention and gives you one lure that can cover several different depths. It also has a snake-like action with those specially hinged body joints. Okay, now I put the vein right back here as far as it will go. Now that turns it into a surface popper and what that does is make a little popping gurgling sound on the surface. So, we're going to keep very, very quiet and we hopefully, you'll pick it up with a camera because the pike can pick it up as well, trust me. This is excellent when you want to go in the summer. Now this is a surface popping one, but it's got two little hinged paddles there. It's like a little bug, looks like a bumblebee, doesn't it? But it makes a beautiful noise on the surface, and that's what you want if you're doing warm water or summer lure fishing. You can creep it around weed beds. Not so good in the winter, I find, because they're down deep, they're not near the surface. But shallow water, man, they can really crash these, and it's exciting. See if we can pick it up on the camera for you. Okay, moving on from the hard ones, the hard plastic ones, and wood ones, the Barry Mundy, you've got the new version, which are now, look, stretchy rubber, all ridged, all jointed, single treble, because that's, what, four inches long, is sort of bite size, that one. Now, 
this has got lead in the head so if you've got a clean riverbed or you're over gravel or there's no snags you can actually let it lay on the bottom and then pop it off i'm telling you that can be really deadly a for catching pike and b for losing the lure it's your risk let me show you in our special training pond here for artificial lures what it looks like there's no doubt that the age of the soft lure is with us improvements in rubbers and plastics together with colors and weights mean there are lots of distributors out there of the soft lures. Some catch, some don't. But there is no disputing their popularity with lure anglers. Some say the pike grab them for their lifelike feel. Now hang on, I've had pike grabbing hard lures for over 40 years. Okay, we're getting near the end of the lure box. No, I've got dozens and dozens. It's just to give you a good basic idea of what artificial lures do for pike fishing. This one is a, I call this a shad. No idea what the manufacturers call it, but I call it a shad, just a balloon shaped belly. And it's got, if you look on there, nice big belly there, color bright, they can see that, a graded color rather than a rigid block color. But the top of the head, it doesn't have the vein, but they flattened, if you can see the top of that head, and that's the part that digs in the water. So because it doesn't have a big area to bite into, it doesn't have a violent action, but it has got, Three packets of split shot in there by the sound of it. Arriba, arriba. Should be in a mariachi band. So there we go, put it in the water, I'll show you what it looks like. And it will be a sinker. <laughs> I'm not surprised with all this shot inside it, but you can see the predators will hear that. Check it out, and I trust me, that will make it a bit of action, give it a bit of action. I don't know if any of you uh, watched that Crocodile Dundee film where a crocodile's with his babe on his left hand side and the rubbers come out from the dark street corners and he whips a knife out and she goes, oh crocodile, they got a knife and he says, that's not a knife darling, this is a knife well, in a true Australian fashion there is a plug and you say, gosh Graham's showing us a lot of plugs today, it's good fun Graham says, nah, that's not a plug this is a plug. This is a Rapala Magnum, the most powerful lure in the world. It could catch you anything. You have to ask yourself, well, Pike, do you feel lucky? I do. you call a plug in that, eh? Well, hopefully, guys, you've learnt something about the different types of spinners, spoons, plugs, jointed, floating, sinking, popping, big, and I've had some big fish on these too, but not pike. And if you get really lucky with lure fishing, because you can get into it, you might catch one of these. This is the downside of plugs. This is a huge pike. I'm telling you guys, a huge pike. The plug is hanging on the edge. This other treble could have caught in a snag at any time, and that is the downside of trebles. That's why I really watch. Oh, I doesn't even bear thinking about this fish. <laughs> this could be my fish of the year, guys. This is so close to 20, it don't bear thinking about. Let's get it weighed up. It's worth getting a booty for. The back she goes, a lovely fish. Pound short of 20. That's sick. Let's just let it recover. Oh, didn't even need to recover. <laughs>